Welcome to the FT Commodities Global Summit. I'm joined here by Ian Taylor, the head of VTOL, the world's largest independent oil trading company. VTOL celebrates its 50th birthday this year. Ian, welcome to the Tsar and congratulations. Thank you. Oh, please. Thank you. Now, perhaps we could just start. 2015 was a very good year uh, for the company. Net income was, was over 1.6 billion. But perhaps you could tell us a bit about how this year has started. Um, we've noticed that last year was boasted by some you know, big prepay deals. How are you seeing the environment for the year ahead? Yeah, um, it is slightly tougher this year. Um, obviously, some of the market structure has moved slightly in a little bit, so there's not quite so much contango. The market itself hasn't had many open arbitrages. So basically, it looks like it's going to be a much tougher year. OK. I mean, you mentioned there um, the contango. I mean, what is your outlook for the oil market this year? Um, yes, the contango in Brent has narrowed very sharply. What is that telling us? I mean, I thought this oil market was oversupplied. Is this a turning point or is it, or is it more technical than that? Yeah, I think it's a little bit more technical than that. I mean, obviously, depending on how Brent is doing in terms of maintenance and, and, the, and the specific demand for the crude oil, you can get certain months when obviously there may, there may be very strong demand for that particular mark of crude. Um, I, I would say that the market um, is moving slightly towards a better balance, but still remains effectively long. Primarily, um, you know, OPEC production remains pretty high. Um, U.S. production is coming off, um, but the market in general remains long. But do you think the price has bottomed then, or are we likely to revisit sort of sub-30 level that we saw earlier this year? It's a very difficult question, and I, I, I think we all feel that perhaps the market is getting towards the bottom. But, you know, if there's not a successful outcome in Doha next week, then I suspect that we might see one or two speculators who were or have been long for that meeting, um, selling again and the price drifting back off again. And what odds would you give of, su of a successful meeting at Doha next well, week? Define what you mean by success, I suppose, on that one. Um, you know, I, I suppose I think it's uh, probably likely that some type of agreement will be found, but what that really means in terms of the longer term oil balances is difficult to say at this stage because an agreement simply to hold production doesn't really address the, the long situation that we have in terms of supply and demand. Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier, VTOL is 50 years old this year. Um, the company's moving more than 6 million barrels a day of crude and product now. What are your ambitions for the company going forward? I mean, how do you keep a company of this size continually growing? Where do you want to see VTOL in the next, the next well, five or I, ten years? I, hopefully, I'd like to see us continue to be relevant, continue to hopefully finding good solutions for, 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 for making sure that energy is, 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 is efficiently and well distributed, hopefully in a cheap and, and, and safe manner. Um, you know, we continue to look at lots of opportunities to grow the business. Um, you know, we're looking at a number of assets, mainly in the downstream sector still. Um, nothing particular happening right at this second, but we announced last week a small purchase in Pakistan, for example. Um, and I think that's the sort of thing you'll see us do a little bit more of over the next year. So there are assets out there attractively priced increasingly? Um, or Attractively priced, it's difficult to find uh, and obviously, you know, particularly difficult in the upstream side where, you know, it probably isn't possible at the current price to find attractive assets. But yes, I mean, there are areas where we, we can still find things to do. And there's still appetite on your, on your part for more assets. So it's something you've, you've gone into increasingly, I guess, over the last five years or so. There's still appetite to... To buy yeah, more there, obviously, we've been, we try to be extremely selective about picking up uh, assets which will fit in with our supply and distribution business, with the trading businesses, uh, and can be very physical. So um, that's not easy to find. Um, but yes, we, we'd like to continue to grow that when we're not very asset heavy, if you want. OK, just to change topics quickly, um, I mean, it's said that you're backing the, for the UK to stay in, in, in the Europe um, with this debate. I mean, firstly, um, why do you think it's so important that the UK does stay within uh, the EU? And also, can you give us a flavour of how you think the campaign's going at the moment to remain in? Is it being effective in your view? Well, I, I should start by saying, of course, it's my personal view yes, and not, not Vito's view. Uh, um, but yes, no, I mean, I believe on, on several different levels, whether they're economic, educational, security, it is better to be inside Europe. I think, I think effectively um, the UK is doing pretty well and benefits effectively from you know, the single market. Uh, and, and I wouldn't like to give that up. Um, so I, I do believe that if we came out, sadly, it would be very, very difficult. I think we'd find huge problems in, in negotiating trade deals, you know, uh, because we'd be a very small 
and almost, uh, I wouldn't say irrelevant, but a small player. And I think, you know, we're all see already seeing banks preparing, if necessary, to go back to Brussels, France, um, you know, go back to Germany. Um, and I think that would really have a, a negative effect on, on the City of London. Um, I mean, I think the campaign is, um, uh, you know, it's probably not quite got going yet, and it's difficult to, you know, difficult to, um, you know, with the political parties somewhat split, it's, it's a difficult thing to have a referendum campaign, um, but it will probably dominate our lives the next couple of months. Ian Taylor, thanks very much. Thank you.